Well, hello and welcome back to Happily Home Cooking. Cooler fall weather is finally here and it has given me a major craving for some soup. This week I made a creamy loaded potato soup in the slow cooker and it hit the spot. Now I gotta ask the great debate, has fall given you the craving for soup, chili, or pumpkin spice? For me, it's definitely all three. Last week I made our pumpkin pie cinnamon rolls, which were so amazing. Today I'm doing the potato soup, and next week I'll probably be doing the chili. I'll leave the link to some of those other yummy fall videos in the description, and make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you don't miss out on the future ones. So come on into the kitchen with me, and I'm gonna show you step by step how I make this easy breezy, creamy loaded potato soup. So we'll start off with some bacon. I'm going to use three quarters of a pound of this thick sliced bacon. This is just from Costco. So that's about six to eight slices. We'll give it a quick chop. And we'll cook this up in a skillet over a medium high heat until that fat has rendered out and our bacon is nice and crisp. Then we'll scoop out our bacon. I like to let it drain on a paper plate and we'll just set it aside. Yum, yum. Next, we will use one large yellow onion and about three to four stalks of celery. My celery is pretty big, so I am just using three today. We'll give this all a quick chop. And then in the same skillet that we cooked our bacon in, I have drained off most of the grease and we are going to just add in our chopped onions and celery to give them a little saute. I like to cook these for about five to 10 minutes or so or until those onions begin to get some nice color. If you're in a hurry, you do not absolutely have to do this whole step of cooking the veggies first. I like to do it since I already have my skillet out and dirtied from the bacon. It helps build a little extra flavor if you saute the veggies first, but not absolutely necessary. If you need to, just throw those raw veggies into your slow cooker. So next we'll add in a heaping teaspoon of minced garlic. I like to buy our garlic already minced in a jar from Costco, but if you're using fresh garlic cloves, that's awesome too. You'll probably want to use about three to four cloves of garlic. Let that continue cooking just one minute more or until that garlic is nice and fragrant. Then we'll turn off the heat and just set this aside for a moment while we chop our potatoes. I am using two to two and a half pounds of russet potatoes. I am just peeling and dicing them. And then that is pretty much it for our prep. We are ready to start throwing everything together in the slow cooker. Starting by adding those potatoes. Our onions, celery, and garlic. We'll add some of our bacon that we cooked up. I'm not going to add all of it. I like to reserve some for garnishing on tops of the bowls of soup, but I'm gonna add in about two thirds or so into our slow cooker and we'll reserve the rest. Then for our liquid, we will add four cups of water. One cup of milk, I'm using 2% milk. You can use any kind of milk you like. Next, I'm adding a rounded tablespoon of chicken bouillon, or I like to use this better than bouillon, which again, you can get in a nice big jar from Costco, or you could use the powdered bouillon if that is your preference. We're adding a half a tablespoon of sea salt, half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and one teaspoon of dried parsley. Now I'm gonna give this just a gentle little stir just to kind of spread those seasonings around, make sure everybody's down in the pool. 
Then we'll pop the lid on and we will set our slow cooker to high and I'm gonna let this cook for three hours. You may find that you want to adjust your cooking time slightly depending on the size of your potatoes. I find that after three hours, my potatoes are cooked perfectly. They have a nice al dente bite to them and have not turned to complete mush. So now our soup is all cooked, but you'll notice it does not yet look like a creamy potato soup. So we will add a few ingredients to take care of that. We'll add a half a cup of sour cream. I'm using reduced fat sour cream today just to cut down on the fat content a little bit. But of course you can use regular sour cream if that's what you like. Next we'll add four ounces of cream cheese. I've kind of cut this into little cubes a bit to help it break apart. Get that down in there. And then four slices of good old American cheese. So I really like the creaminess that American cheese lends to this. It just melts really, really well. But if you're not a fan of American cheese, I understand. Um, you could totally try substituting a different kind of cheese. If you do, leave me a comment and let me know what you used and how it turned out. So once we've got those cheeses mostly melted, I'm gonna hit this with my immersion blender just a little bit. We're just going to partially puree this. This is going to help to thicken our soup, help to give it that slightly thicker, more chowdery texture. If you don't have an immersion blender, that's okay. Just scoop up some of your soup, put it into a blender, and then return it back to the pot with the rest. How much of this you puree versus how much you leave in chunks is totally up to your personal preference. So you can see I've still left mine nice and chunky. I just like to do a little bit of that pureeing, but not too much. After that, don't forget to give it a taste. You can adjust the seasonings to your preference. I find the seasonings that we've added are just perfect for our taste. It has lots of flavor, nice and peppery, but feel free to adjust to suit your own taste. Now your soup will continue to thicken as it stands, so whenever you are ready to serve it, whenever it has reached the thickness that you like, go ahead and dish up a bowl. I like to garnish this with a bit of shredded cheese some of our reserved bacon, and some chopped green onions. This is like a loaded baked potato in a bowl. Welcome to fall, let soup season begin. Thanks so much for watching. If you try making this recipe, I would love to hear how it turns out for you. Leave me a comment, let me know if you make any changes. And again, before you go, make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have your notifications turned on so you don't miss out on our next family favorite recipe. I wish you a wonderful day, a beautiful fall season, and happy home cooking.